How far can you row in two and a half minutes? How far can you row if you have to row two and a half minutes four times? Let's find out in today's intermediate rowing workout. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Shane Farmer, and this is Dark Horse, where you build the life that you want to live, and we just happen to use rowing to help you get there. So the name of the game today is Racing Against the Clock. That is today's rowing workout. This is going to be 20 total minutes, two and a half minutes on, two and a half minutes off. That's five minutes. We're going to do that four times, and you are going to find out how far you can go in two and a half minutes without falling off of a cliff. And that is the piece of the puzzle that we need to solve today. Now, if you're gonna be doing this workout, number one, make sure that you've warmed up. And if you're looking for that, go ahead and check out some of our other videos in which we warm you up and get you comfortable on the machine. And then if you stick around because you finished the workout, I'm gonna have a cool down video specifically for the rowing machine for you to use so that after the workout is done, you can come join me right in the cool down so that you get the most out of the workout and maximize all of your time that you actually spend around this machine. Now, we love our rowing workout here at Dark Horse and this one is just meant to be fun. It's meant for you to enjoy yourself and get a great workout. The only caveat is that we're gonna hit a stroke rate cap of 22. Why 22? Well, many of you are familiar with a 24 and that might be a very comfortable range for you. So I'm intentionally taking it down two beats because it's good for us to work on our weaknesses. So 22 stroke rate or below is what you have to do today. Now to hit 22, you just have to match my stroke. If you wanna go lower, you are welcome to but that's gonna be the stroke rate cap while we try to squeeze as much out of every single stroke as possible to get us as far as we can. Now I mentioned in the intro, I don't want you falling off a cliff today. So just go into it with that mindset. How do you build over these pieces while still making workout or piece one hard, but how do you hold just enough in the tank so that you can spread it over four pieces without on number three just crashing and burning. That's not what we want. We don't want a crash and burn scenario here. Now the work is going to be one to one, so two and a half minute work, two and a half minute rest. That's pretty simple. You're just gonna get one to one rest, which is gonna mean that going into each piece, you're gonna feel recovered, but not fully. And that's okay, that's half of the learning effort here. So with that being said, you can do this on any machine, always. You can do it on whatever rower you want to use. So to set our monitor for the workout, we will go to select workout, B button, new workout, D button, intervals, D button, intervals, time, B button, and then I'm going to change it to two and a half minutes. That requires that I hit the plus button B once, the right arrow A once, the plus button B three times, one, two, three. That gives me two and a half minutes. Now I need to hit that right arrow A one, two, three times, and I hit the plus button B twice, one, two. The right arrow A once, and then the plus button B three times, one, two, three. That gives me two and a half minutes of work time, two and a half minutes of rest time. I am ready. I'm gonna hit the check mark, check mark, and we're gonna get ready to go. So again, stroke rate cap of 22. You're welcome to go below that if you like. Otherwise, get strapped in. Let's sit ready to go in three. Two, one, go!
All right, there's piece one. How'd that feel? I suggest you keep moving just a little bit. Keep the legs flushing oxygen through. Fresh air. How'd that 22 feel? I know for me it started to feel pretty slow at the end there. It wasn't quite as chipper as I was in that first minute. And I really tried to peel my expectations back after 45 seconds. Felt like I was flying a little too close to the sun. Just tried to pull back a little bit before my wings melted. So, it's generally advisable in workouts like this, where it's pretty short rest periods, that you just keep moving during the rest. Um, stopping is gonna get your body kind of locked up, forgetting the feeling of moving. So just light movement where you practice good mechanics is usually a good idea. As slow as you can, just focus on moving well. Okay, going in 10 seconds, piece number two, stroke rate is gonna stay at that 22. You gotta work to squeeze as much out of it as you can. Try to stay consistent. Two, one, go.
That was number two. So it just made me think. A lot of you want to know what my scores are when we do these workouts. You ask about my times, how I did on the workout, and I just want to let you know that it's by choice that I don't report them. There was a while where I did, but what I've learned from you guys and listening is that my performance doesn't matter. And it's, it's honestly important to know, I don't wanna be the star of your show. I wanna be a guide for you. And the reason I say I don't wanna be the star is because you're writing your own life story right now. And so when it comes to the scores or the performances on a workout, what's so great about rowing is that it's always just you against you. It's not you against me or you against the next person commenting in the video. It's you against you. And in a workout like this, where you get four opportunities to try and beat the same distance, that's the work that matters, not how I'm doing. So I'm gonna right now just tell you my meters once because it doesn't really matter. I'm just doing it for me. You know, my scores are, I don't track them hardly. I put them in the Concept2 logbook, so if you follow me on there or on Strava, you'll be able to see them. But it's not my scores that matter. It's just how well you're able to perform for you. And I want that emphasis, that importance to come through so that you can have great workouts where you don't feel self-conscious and you don't worry about what anyone else is doing. You worry about you. And it's just a good metaphor for life. 10 seconds until we start round three. Three, two, one, here we go.
That was set three. One to go. So, told you I'd tell you a score. Round two was 719 meters. I was better on the first, and I was better on the third here. So, you know, playing around with it. I wasn't far off. I think it might have been a tenth of a second difference on the split. But there you go. There's the score. But that's all you get. Because you keep the focus in. Keep it right here on what's happening with you. Listen to your body. Learn how to make small tweaks. That's what these workouts are about, these intermediate workouts. They're about teaching you those phases where you make small tweaks, where you improve, where you get better. So that when you get to our advanced workouts, it's nothing but thriving there. You're not having to play catch up. It's the worst, getting into a big workout and realizing that you're kind of underpowered or you've still got more to learn. Those things are so important to knock out early. And that's why I've broken it down into the learn to row workouts or the beginner series, then into the intermediates, and then the advanced. Take your time, don't be in a rush. Feel like you're really rocking these intermediate workouts before you move on to the advanced ones. Woo. One left. This one is about focus. Focus on your split, the whole piece. Don't let it run away from you for more than a stroke. If you notice it shift, make the necessary adjustment. Give that 1% more power, 2% more power to get more out of it. Straighten up, engage that midline, inflate the spare tire, <laughs> okay? Getting to go in five seconds. Three, two, one, here we go. Oh, 
That one got me. How did I get you? You keep rowing. Keep cooling down to this final two and a half. So, takeaways. Number one, spend your time in the intermediate workouts. Gain the control of things like stroke rate and split before you move up to the advanced. Doing so is gonna mean that you have much greater control and that control means faster splits. It means that a workout can't just bowl you over because a variable doesn't make sense. And it means you're gonna have more fun. The frustration level drops when you understand the intricacies. That it might mean that you're in these workouts for a couple months, and that's fine. Just like it's fine to spend a couple months in the learn to row workouts. And doing so will make sure that you are on the right track and that you grow proportionately. So while you may be super fit from other stuff, if this is your first touch on the rowing machine, getting the mechanics right will go a long way. If you got a fantastic workout here and you want more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. But more importantly, hit the bell next to it. Because if you're part of the PDP army, those, those bell dingers, the bell ringers, the people who hit the bell, then you're gonna get the first alert when we come out with a new video. And what I'm finding is that the people who hit that bell and come and comment first on the videos are the ones that, I've been, that I'm able to communicate with because of how popular the channel's gotten. So if you wanna communicate, if you wanna hear back from me where I can like hard or respond to your comments, do that, hit the bell. And if you need to cool down now, which you really should, come join me in this mobility video where you're gonna get a nice cool down to treat your body well so that come tomorrow, you're still gonna feel good and appreciate the work you did.